Two months ago, I thought to myself, why not make the famous J.W. Anderson inspired cardigan, or also known as the Harry Styles cardigan. But I'm not really a fan of the original pattern or color because it looks more like a coat to me and it's contrasting to what I usually wear. Besides, I live in Indonesia and there's only ever going to be two seasons here. Winter is not one of them. So then I thought, what's the point of making this cardigan if I'm not going to wear it? Until I found this. A video from Elviona making this inspired cardigan with a twist of pattern and colors really inspired me. So that is what we're making today. For the materials, you will need 3 colors of yarn, each of them for about 250 grams or equals to 5 rolls of these, and an extra 100 grams or 2 rolls for the ribbing. For mine, I use white. And then you also need a crochet hook, a needle, a pair of scissors, and measuring tapes, which I forgot to insert in this clip. Moving on to the patterns, here's the back side, the front side, and the sleeves. You'll need a total of 51 squares for these patterns, 17 squares for each color. And I changed the pattern, so if you wanted to use the original one, go ahead and check Alviona's video, I'll put a link in the description box. The squares are basically half double crochets starting off with 22 chains and going up till 18 rows. So now I'm going to show you how to make those. So to make the squares, we're going to start off by making a slip knot. Just twist the yarn and then take the longer end and it'll basically make a slip knot. I don't really know how to explain this one but I hope you understand just by seeing the video. Once you've made your slip knot, just slide your hook into the loop that you've made and then make sure that the longer side of the yarn is closer to you. And then again, use the longer yarn, circle it around your hook and pull the hook through that loop. So this is your first chain and then we're gonna do that again. And for this around the hook motion, I'm gonna call it yarn over and then pull through the chain just to make it, you know, shorter. And then keep doing this until you have 22 chains. We actually only need 20 rows for the squares, but you have to add two for the starter chains because later on it will decrease by two, if that makes sense. So now that you have 22 chains, we're going to start and crochet the second row. To start your half double crochet, you need to go to the third chain from the hook and don't count the loop that is on the hook. So yarn over and then count 1, 2, 3 and slide your hook through that third chain. Do another yarn over, pull through and then now you're gonna have 3 loops on your hook. And then yarn over again, pull through all 3 loops. And this is going to create your first double crochet. And you're going to want to do the same for the next one. Yarn over and then go to your next chain. Just slide in the hook and then pull through. Now you're going to have three loops on your hook again. Yarn over and then pull through all three loops. So this is basically the half double crochet and you have created two stitches. And you're going to keep going until you reach the end of the chain. You can pause this video if it's going too fast because I am gonna fast forward this. So, <laughs> Pause the video and I'm gonna meet you in the end. So I'm almost at the end. I just have to do one more half double crochet. Here is my last one. And now make sure that you have 20 stitches. You can count the stitches by looking at the V shapes on the top. Okay, now at the end, make two chains, one, two, and this is for the turning chain. So then yarn over, turn it over, and then go to your second stitch. Do the same as what you did before, pull through three chains on the hook, and then yarn over, pull all three chains, and that is your half double crochet. So I'm gonna show you one more time before I fast forward this process. When you slide in the hook, make sure that you go to both of the chains and then pull through three hooks on the chain and pull through all of them. 
Don't worry, it's gonna get easier when you've practiced a few times. And starting from the second row till the end, basically, there's gonna be a slight difference on the last chain. So I'm gonna show you that once we've reached the end. Okay, we've reached the last two stitches. I'm gonna do the same thing, yarn over, um, slip in the hook, pull through, yarn over, and pull all three chains. And this is where it gets tricky. You, it's gonna seem like you finish your second row, but if you count, you're only gonna have 19 stitches. And the last stitches is basically hidden in the first row. There's gonna be a V shape on the side of it, and you're gonna wanna put your hook in there. It's really hard because I'm making my stitches a bit narrow and tight. So if you don't wanna struggle doing this, then you might want to loosen up your stitches. Okay, here's another one of me attempting to show you guys clearly, which I still didn't pull off. I'm, I'm trying to show you that last stitch, it's just really hard to do it under the camera. So I'm just gonna show you how it looks after you did that final stitch. The side of it will be a straight line, so if you don't do this last stitch, your uh, half double crochet square will decrease one stitch every row. I don't know if what I said actually makes any sense, but I don't know, maybe the video speaks for itself. <laughs> so now I'm gonna show you how you can connect your yarn if it's cut off in the middle like that, or if you ran out of yarn and then you wanna join it with a new one. So here's gonna be my last half double crochet. I'm gonna stop until I have three chains on my hook. And then I'm gonna take my new yarn, put it on my hook, and then slide it through that three chains. Once you've got it in, you can just continue normally and make sure that you pull the excess yarn to make it tighter. And then later, I will show you how to secure that to access yarn off and kind of hide it so that it's not sticking out. Okay, I have continued my half double crochet stitches till the end and <laughs> I'm gonna re-attempt for the third time to show you again how to do this last stitch. As you can see, there's a tiny hole right there. So what you're gonna do is yarn over and then just push your hook through that hole. And that is your last stitch. I hope it's more clear because the color is white and it's more contrasting with the background. Okay, I'm almost at the end of my 18th row. I just have three more stitches. And on to my last stitch. Always a struggle in this last one. Okay, it is done. And to secure the end, cut your yarn off like I did. Leave about 10 centimeters and then do one more chain and pull the yarn tightly. That's basically it. So now I'm left with this to access yarn on the edges and then two more right here because my yarn was randomly cut off in the middle. Now I'm gonna show you how to hide it. First thing for the middle one, tie the two yarns together just to make sure that it is really secure. And then the next few steps will require your needle. So you can keep your hook away for now. Insert the yarn through the needle hole and then try to find that V shape in the squares that is in the same row with the excess yarn that you just tied off. Honestly, it doesn't matter how many stitches you wanna tuck your yarn into or the direction or the number of rows. It really doesn't matter. As long as it is hidden perfectly and then you just cut the excess yarn off and you're fine. But for me, I always go to the opposite direction. So for the first yarn, I'm going to the left and then up and then to the right. And for the second yarn, I'm gonna go to the right, up and then left. So again, if you're still wondering where to tuck the yarn into, Here's a better look of it. 
So I'm putting my needle through that V shape, both of them, and then I'm just gonna pull my needle and then the yarn will go through there. You can stop right here and directly cut the yarn, but I wanted it to be extra secure so I went to the next stitch and this time I'm only going into the first loop. So in every stitch there's always two loops which makes that v-shade that I mentioned a lot of times before. So I'm going to that first loop and then going back to the previous stitches that I've tucked my yarn into. And then pull my needle again and this makes my yarn extra secure so yeah now I'm going to cut it off do the same on the other side and I'm not gonna show this again I'm gonna skip directly to the edges personally I think this part is easier than the middle one the first step is the same just insert the yarn through the needle hole and then it's easier to see the V shapes in this area so I'm gonna give you my formula. I usually go 5 to 6 steps to the left and then I go 1 row down, 3 steps to the right and back 5 steps to the left. I know it's confusing, <laughs> it's gonna make more sense when you see me do this in the video so just bear with me guys. Okay, this is 5 steps to the left. What I mean is I've tucked my yarn into 5 V shapes to the left. And then now I'm going down. And then I'm going to the right. It looks like I'm going to the left because I turned the square around. But yeah, I'm going 3 to the right and then I'm gonna go back like what I told you before. I'm only gonna go to the first loop for the next stitch and then go back 5 to the left. You just need to cut the yarn off and that is how you hide your access yarn, people. <laughs> okay, now let's move on to the next part. To make the ribbings and the cuffs, you also need to do half double crochets but back loops only. And you'll need to make two kinds of ribbing, the bottom ribbing which is wider and also the front ribbing. Here are the measurements of each ribbing and the cuffs. You can screenshot this for reference, but I'll explain more about it later on along with the tutorial. To make the ribbing, we're still gonna start off with a slip knot and we're gonna chain 11 to make the cuffs and the bottom ribbing. But for the front ribbing, you only need to chain 6. In this clip, I'm making the bottom ribbing, so I'm gonna chain 11. Once you have 11 chains, you're gonna do what you did before when making the squares. Skip 2 chains and then go to the 3rd chain to make a half double crochet. So for this entire first row, you're gonna do the exact same thing like what you did on the squares. Make a normal half double crochet until the end and then make sure that you have 9 stitches. Okay, now I'm gonna count my stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I have 9 stitches and now I'm gonna continue to make 2 chains for the turning chain. Okay, here's the difference. So instead of going to both loops, like when you do a half double crochet, you're only going to take the back loop. So put your hook through there and then do a half double crochet. And yeah, just continue to do that until the end of the row except for the last stitch. I'm almost at the last stitch, this is my second last. And for the last one, you're actually gonna go to both loops because I don't know what the reason is but I can't really know which one's the back loop so I'm just doing it normally like what I did in the normal half double crochets like the squares and then I'm gonna chain two 
yarn over, turn the thing around and do the same thing again for the next row until you have approximately 120 centimeters for the bottom ribbing and for the cuffs, it depends on the size of your wrist. But for mine, I'm making it a bit larger than my wrist. It's about 18 centimeters long. And last but not least, for the front ribbing, start with six chains and do a half double crochet back loops only until you have approximately 108 centimeters. Before you start joining the squares, make sure that the bad side that has all the hidden access yarn are facing the same way so that later when you flip it over, the other side is neat. And then take any piece of yarn, although I suggest using the leftover yarns, and cut double the length of the squares. Insert the yarn through your needle hole, and when you do this first step, make sure that your squares are aligned. Insert the needle through each corner stitches of both squares, and then just detach the needle from the yarn and tie these off together. I usually tie it twice just to make sure that it is really secure and insert the yarn back to your needle. So this is where your sewing process begins. Take one side loop from each square, always making sure that it is aligned and then pull your needle through both of them. Continue this process until you've reached the end of the squares and I'll show you one more time before I will fast forward this. Okay, I'm on the other side of the square now, and once you have reached the other corner, please do not just cut the yarn off, it will not be secure. So what you need to do is flip the squares over, and then go back to the stitches that you have made before. Just put your needle through there and then simply pull it off, and then going back to that same stitch and pulling your needle off again. This will create a knot that is more secure and it is way better if you repeat it a few more times before you cut it. After you cut the yarn off, this is how your stitches should look like. And when you flip it over, I don't think you can even see the stitch. So here's the pattern again. And this is how it's gonna look like when we combine it all together. The green line shows where you need to sew your squares. Okay, I'm gonna try to also show you uh, in the real form because maybe you can't understand the illustration. And by the way, I'm sorry for my legs. I didn't know that it got into the frame. And for the sleeves, it's going to be like this. So these two are gonna be attached with this. And then, I'm gonna flip this one there. And then this top part will be attached with this one. And then you're gonna sew the bottom part. And the same with this one, we're gonna attach this with this and then this. And then I'm gonna flip this and attach the top ones. So this is your model. Here's how it looks once it's all combined together. I haven't joined the left arm though. But yeah, I don't know why I took it from this angle. It should have been from the top, but this is the clip that I have, so. Anyways, I'm measuring the bottom ribbing right now. Joining the ribbing to the cardigan is exactly the same like joining the squares. You basically take one loop from the side of the squares and one loop from the ribbing and just pull your needle. The only difference is that you definitely need a longer yarn for this. And now for the cuffs, I'm just gonna measure it around my wrist and I make sure that it is slightly larger than my wrist so that it's not too tight. And then again, basically do the same thing like what you did on the squares. But this time, instead of using another piece of yarn, I just leave a longer yarn at the end before I cut it off and just use it to combine both sides of the cuffs. At the end, don't forget to go back to the other side and go through the stitches that you've already made before you cut the yarn off.
This next part is a bit tricky because you have to connect something this small to this huge cardigan sleeve and I don't exactly know how other people do this because I didn't find a tutorial about this but this is just how I did it so first I just tie it off normally like I did with the squares and then for the next few uh, sewing process I take three loops from the squares and combine them into one loop from the cuffs I also made an illustration for this, sort of, and I hope it'll help you understand more. So here it is. Okay, so both of these are half double crochet squares, and consider this thing's the side loops. And normally, every side loop has its own partner, let's say that way. So this is how we connect it. But considering that the diameter of the cuffs are way smaller than the squares or the sleeves, so I made every side loop of the cuffs have around 3 or 4 partners. And this is how I combined them. Okay, I know the drawing is horrible, but at least I hope you get the picture of it. And now, just continue and do that until you've reached the end. Do the same thing to secure it, and we're basically done! Here is the final look! I've made a lot of mistakes along the way, yet I still am in love with how it turned out. So for any of you who are a complete beginner and think that you have no chance of getting this right, well, you are wrong. I promise you, it is so worth it. You will be so satisfied and proud of yourself once you've made this. So go ahead and try it out, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!